Welcome to Fintech Insider Interviews. Today I am joined by David Gill, who is the Director of Policy for the FCA. Um, David, thank you very much for, for joining us uh, and thank you very much for making the time and, and coming along. My pleasure. Tell us a little bit more about your, uh, your role at the FCA. It's a pretty impressive job title, so uh, what does it mean in practice? Well, what it means in practice is that I'm responsible for policy right across financial services uh, at the FCA. So that's from consumer credit through to uh, the, the rules that govern the accountability in senior executives in banks, uh, through to pensions, for example. So, um, and many things in between. And a very exciting part of what we do is actually focusing on innovation. Brilliant. Well, and that's very much at the heart of uh, lots of changes that are happening in the, in the industry today, which is fantastic. So. What, um, what did you do before you, you came to the FCA then? How did you, uh, how did you come to this role? Uh, well, I've been at the FCA for nearly 15 years. So actually, I, I've been across the organization doing various different things. Uh, before that, I was actually in a customer-facing role, uh, working as a mortgage broker and a financial advisor. So actually, in the same sort of sector, but actually very different. And, and for people, I guess, uh, our overseas sort of listeners and, uh, and viewers of this, what, what's the core purpose of the FCA? Well, the core purpose is we have a strategic objective, which is to make markets function well. And then we have three objectives that sit below that, which are broadly around ensuring an appropriate degree of protection for consumers, uh, ensuring the integrity of the financial markets, and also promoting effective competition that works in the interests of consumers. So broadly, it's about consumer protection, promoting um, innovation, or, sorry, competition and innovation, um, but also actually ensuring the integrity of the market. Yeah, and that obviously that competition part is a, a major thread of, of what's happening today, isn't it? You know, we're seeing competition changing quite dramatically, which is you know, as you say, great for the consumer, isn't it? Yes. Well, we took on a competition objective a couple of years ago, and that, that's changed some of our focus. Uh, I think if markets work well, if firms compete on the right basis, that's all good for consumers. Uh, and, and positive disruption in the industry is a really good thing because it makes firms think differently, makes them challenge themselves and consumers get a better deal as a result. Great. Um, one of the major things, obviously, the changes that's happened over the last few years is uh, with, I think it was 2014, we saw mm. Project Innovate mm. be established. Um, you know, this is something that we've seen many people try to uh, emulate, really, in terms of where we're going. But mm. what was the, the thinking with Project Innovate? So Project Innovate is something we're very proud of. Uh, as you say, we launched it at the end of 2014. The thinking behind it was broadly that we were seeing firms having ideas uh, ideas that they wanted to bring forward to market that we thought actually that is something that's really good it's something that can challenge the status quo it can improve things for consumers either through better access um, better education better understanding better cost there's all sorts of things that we thought it could improve but some firms were saying they were struggling with how those new ideas fitted within the existing regulatory framework mm -hmm. particularly where that framework wasn't designed with those ideas in mind so that was really the genesis of innovate was to say how can we work with those businesses, partly to help them and partly to help us make sure that regulation moves with the times? And I guess one of the major things that's uh, come out of this initiative is the, the sandbox, yes. which again, we're, we're seeing so many people trying mm. to, to sort of emulate in terms mm. of where we're going. What, what was the thinking behind the, uh, the, the regulatory sandbox? Well, the sandbox is there for firms who really need to test in a live environment. Now, the example I will often give is around disclosure. So if I actually present to you something and say, this is the current disclosure, here's a new version, which one of these do you prefer? Which one of these do you understand? Well, well, to a degree, that's cheating. It's better than nothing in terms of testing, but you've cheated because actually you've got people to read it in the first place. And that's generally the core challenge is getting people to engage, getting people to read. So if you can test that in a live environment and say, okay, there's, you know, we know what you would have had. Now, what's the difference in actual behavior um, with this new form or new style, maybe digital disclosure, for example? Mm -hmm. You can actually really see the impact of the results. So that's one example. Um, but equally, from a firm's perspective, they want to see whether the idea will work. Um, it's all very well asking people whether actually they would buy a particular product, whether they would use a particular service, uh, but it's nothing like seeing it in practice. Yeah, completely agree. And, and actually, there's the, the, the latest sort of tranche of that. There's some incredibly interesting companies coming through there. So, you know, it's going to be really interesting to, uh, to get you guys back and talk about that one uh, more down the line. So um, I, I guess, you know, every time I'm, I'm sort of um, asked about why mm. London has really sort of bloomed as the, the capital of fintech, I, you know, I think the regulator plays such a massive part of that. Um, how much are you guys working with other geographies? Because obviously, you know, we've seen Hong Kong and mm. Singapore and uh, even into the uh, to the US in terms of uh, mm. trying to 
like we say, emulate some of the things that you guys have been doing. Mm. Um, do you guys work very closely with, with other uh, other countries? Well, we've always worked closely with other countries in performing our, our general regulatory duties. Mm. I, I would say, though, I think since Innovate was launched, I've probably travelled more um, than I've ever done before. Uh, in the last year, I've been to the US, been to China, been to Canada, um, and, very, and Hong Kong and various other places. Um, and there's always a lot of interest in what we're doing. So, so that, that's great. Um, in terms of building on that interest, what we want is to basically use Project Innovate to help firms who've got good ideas, mm -hmm. um, either to expand their ideas into other jurisdictions or to help firms from other jurisdictions come into the UK where, where, to do business where they've got good ideas as well. So, um, so we have a number of agreements we've set up with a number of regulators, or fintech bridges if you like, uh, where we will share information with those regulators. Um, and if a firm qualifies for support from our innovation hub, then we can help introduce them to the innovation hub in those other countries as well. Fantastic. Maybe a, a little bit more about you then. So um, mm. obviously, like you say, you're a, you're a busy guy and you uh, you travel uh, travel around these mm. places. Um, mm. What what's I guess how do you stay on top of all of this? How do you what's your number one productivity hack in terms of doing it? Mm. Well, it's probably twofold actually. One is not to rely entirely on myself. <laughs> um, so I have a really good team of people around me who who will filter things, who will make sure that I'm on top of everything. But also actually using the technology that's available nowadays. So um, it's one thing to have a BlackBerry, which you know, many of us have had for many years, but actually the ability to do things on an iPad and so on, I, I think is just transformational. Yeah, there's almost no off now, is there? That's that's the thing with uh, productivity. Yeah. It's, uh, it's knowing when to turn off the uh, turn off the iPad. That's the trick, isn't it? That's the downside. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And and I guess um, you know to finish up in terms of uh, you know where where we're at. What's the what's the one rule I guess that you you live by? Uh, well, I don't really try and live by rules as such, um, other than obviously in the job. Um, <laughs> but I, I think, um, generally speaking, what, what I tend to focus on is if, if you're going to do something, make sure it matters. Sounds like a very good one to live by. Thanks very much for joining us. Pleasure. Thank you.